Welcome back guys to Nuno Solutions. I'm Nuno and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a WPF desktop graphical user interface. So to start we're going to use Visual Studio 2022. When you get to this create a new project screen you're going to select the language you want. We're going to use C Sharp and then at the right side you're going to select desktop and you're going to want to search for this WPF application. Click next and I'm just going to call this Nuno Solutions WPF and uh, we're going to click next and we're going to use .NET 6.0 click create okay once that's loaded we get Visual Studio loads up and you get your project on the solution explorer on the right side you get the designer up at the top and at the bottom you get the XAML you could actually click this button to just see the designer right and then if you want to switch between the XAML and designer right here at the bottom you see there's a design tab and there's a XAML tab makes it a little bit easier to go back and forth like this I think so then you could zoom in a little bit more here and like that, you can see a little bit more of the window. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the window in the design surface, uh, hit the F4 key on your keyboard. That pulls up this property window on the right side. What we're going to do is change the name or the, the title here, which is under this comment section. If you expand it, you're going to see title, main window. We're going to change this to nunosolutions.com for now. And we're going to say WPF. Next thing we're going to do, because uh, if you saw episode zero, we, we're going to basically create an employee screen uh, that shows a list of employees in the inside of a data grid. And at the top, we're going to have two inputs, an employee ID and an employee uh, name input where we can apply a filter. So let's go over to the left where you see toolbox Expand that. I'm going to click this little pin so we can pin the, the toolbox to the right side. We're going to look at the common. There's a couple of different groupings here. I'm going to go into the common WPF controls group, expand that. And then I'm going to grab a label. And I'm going to drag it over to on top of the design surface of the window. And I'm going to do it using the graphical designer, just so you guys can see how to do it. Because you can do it pretty quickly You're doing this. I'm not going to lie. When you're doing a professional application, you really should be able to do it from the XAML. Because if you're creating a complicated GUI, you're really not going to be able to do everything that you want, typically, from the designer. Uh, we're going to move this over to the right here. We're going to change the list label text. We're going to make the property that we're, what you want to look for is under the common, and it's called content. And we're going to change this to... For now, we're just going to say employees with a parenthesis, and then we're going to say zero. We're just going to set it like that. We're going to change the name of this label as well. We're going to call this LBL so we know it's a label, employees. We're going to add a data grid in here as well. So let's grab a data grid from the toolbox, drag and drop it to the surface. And what you'll notice is that the data grid expands through the complete height and width of the window. Uh, that's by default. This is because when you add a control to the WPF window, it by default just expands completely. The data grid, we have to give it a little bit of top margin. The way you would do that, you click on it. I mean, you could actually drag this and move it like that. And boom, it just that that's good enough. You could also do it from the XAML if you go into the XAML side. And then come in here. Let me just collapse the property window for now so we can see a little uh, collapse the toolbox so we see a little bit more of the code. If you hear it, here's the data grid uh, element. Uh, what you can do is actually this margin uh, attribute. Uh, let me, let's do this. Let's uh, expand this pane so we can see both. We have now the, the XAML at top and we have the surface at the bottom. I just want to show you, see the margin says 0, 41, 0, 0. We're going to change this 41 and we're just going to change it to 0. And you'll notice that the top margin of the grid gets flush with the top of the window. But if I add in a 40 uh, margin to the second place, that basically gives, you know, moves the top part of the data grid down a little bit. Um, if I add a, 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 some padding to this one, this is the left side. If I add a little bit at the third place, that's the left side. So it's, it's left, top, right, and then bottom. And you can see if I scroll down here, now the bottom has, has raised up a little bit. So really what we want here, I'm just going to make it zero. I'm going to make it zero, 40, zero. And uh, if I collapse that and I go into the design view, you can see now you can see the employees at the top. You can see the grid at the bottom. Now we're going to click on this label, hit F4, go into text, and we're going to just increase this to 20 pixels. Then we're also going to make this bold. We're going to actually, you can see that a, there's a little bit of margin at the top. Let's go into the XAML, pull up the label, and we're going to locate the margin attribute. And I'm literally just going to remove the second the second place in, in the margin. I'm just going to make this zero. Go back into the design surface, and you see it, it like moved up. So that's looking good. I, I kind of don't like that there's a lot of margin on the left side here. So I'm going to remove the, the left margin as well. I can move it with the mouse, but I'm just going to come in here and just go like that. Save it. Let's see how it looks like that. Okay. That's better. If you like to have a little bit of margin, maybe a five points would be good enough. Okay, that looks good. We can leave it that way. Uh, now, the next thing is, number one, we need to add two buttons. We're going to have to add an exit button, which I'm going to put right here. Just grab it from the toolbox, drag and drop it, hit F4 to pull up the property window, rename this button to BTN exit, and then 
uh, go into the text, I'm sorry, the common content property. And that's basically the text property of, of the button. Uh, so here you, we're gonna change this to exit. And uh, we definitely wanna make it a little bit wider. And then we're gonna like put it up against the, the right side of the screen here. Then a little bit wider than that. Okay, so we'll add another button actually. Go back in the toolbox, grab another button, put that in here. Let's put this button right next to this one. And this one is gonna be the get employees button. Hit F4, name this button, to BTN get employees. Go to the common content property, change this to get em space employees, press enter. And now we have a get employees button and we have an exit button. I just want to make these buttons a little bit, a little bit taller. And if you want to make them exactly the right size, you go into the layout property. And for example, let's make this height 25. And also we'll do the same thing for the other one. We'll make both of them height 25 just so they match. There we go. All right, so the next thing, let's add uh, two input controls. We're gonna add the employee ID text box. So let's look for text box in the little box. Drop it down here. Make sure it, it aligns with uh, our button and hit F4, go into the properties in, in the name, change this to TBX for text box. And we're gonna make this emp ID. Uh, go into the common content. And uh, actually this one is, I believe the text property. Yeah, text property. So we're just gonna get rid of the text that's in there. Let's add a label. And that's gonna be in the toolbox, drag and drop it over. We're gonna put this right next to the uh, input box or text box. Go in there, change this to label amp ID. So it has a name that we can identify it when we're reading the code. And we're gonna change this label to amp space ID colon. And we're also gonna make this uh, bold. And we're gonna like just fix this up a little bit so it's uh, aligned properly. And then what you could do is, is select the input box or the text box, text, by the way, let's make the text box the height 25 and do the same thing with this. I'm gonna make this also 25. Right now it's a little bit more than 25. So select the text box, select the label, hit copy, hit control C, control V, and then you hold shift and press the right key and it'll move it as a group to the right. That way it's aligned properly. So now you have two input boxes and two labels. We're gonna change this at the second emp ID to emp name. Change the name first to LBL emp name. And then go down to the content uh, text. Actually, the label is, is content. So we're going to change this to emp name. And we're just going to move this over a little bit more. Grab the label. I'm, hold, I'm holding shift and I'm using the left and right keys, by the way. That's how I'm moving, moving this around. And now you, you see what I'm saying? And I'm actually going to highlight both of these. Hold shift and move this a little bit to the side as well. So click on this text box and also rename this to TVX emp name. We're going to add a couple events in here. So for number one, double click on the exit button. That'll give you a button exit click event. And we're literally just gonna say, we basically we just wanna shut down the application. And the way you would do that is a class called application. And you're gonna say dot current, the current. So this is the current application that shut down. Let's just test this. Let's just run it, see what it looks like. Hit, so hit the run button at the top. And then if you press exit, it should just exit the application. And I noticed like the, sp the spacing here is not like 100% perfect. So let's go back into the designer. See, and this is the problem with the designer. It's not like perfect, you know? So I'm just gonna move this a little bit to the side here. So let's do this. Now let's go into this get employees button. We're gonna double click on it to get an, an event. So now we have a BTN get employees click event, uh, which we're gonna code. Uh, get, we're basically gonna code so we can get employees. We'll do that a little bit later. I'm just gonna save this for now. And then the other thing is that if you look at this data grid, it right now has some sample data. I don't want that. So I'm gonna go into the item, this the data grid in the XAML. I'm actually gonna delete this item source code here. So you can see it. So I'm just gonna do this. Okay, now it's empty. This is it for now. We're going to actually create a data layer in the next video that's going to pull from the employees uh, table that I've used in the other videos. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.